Welcome to Civilian Jeeps. I'm Jake, and today we're going to be going over the AC1200 12 gang switch panel by Oxbeam. Now, some of you might be familiar with the 6 and 8 gang panels by Oxbeam. I've, I have both of those as well, one in the LJ, one in the CJ. They've been great units, but I'm excited to try out this AC1200 switch panel to see if it holds up to the 6 and 8 gang quality. Now, today, I've not opened this yet, so let's go and unbox this, see what's inside, and then we're gonna put a battery here on the table and we'll go over the wiring, like how to power this unit. And once I've got the unit powered up, we'll go over some of the features, specifications, functionality of this unit. So let's just dive right into it and see what we got. Okay, so when opening the box, you'll find that here's your stickers with an Oxbeam sticker to place where you want, but here's the actual stickers that go on the toggle panel, the actual switch panel. Now they have everything from front, rear, side, dust light, windshield, cargo, tons of different options. If you've got it on your Jeep or off-road vehicle, most likely it's going to have a sticker in here for you to be able to label it. Here is your AC1200 instruction panel, <laughs> instruction panel, the instructions for the switch panel. Anything you need to know about the unit is most likely going to be in this book. Wiring, functions, features, app control. Make sure you check this out when you receive your unit. Next. Looks like we have the actual switch assembly, and that's that's hefty. That feels like it's got some quality to it. Uh, the top is plastic, and the bottom is like a metal, like a ribbed metal. I guess that's for air cooling to keep this unit cool. Uh, when you look inside of it, they give you some extra fuses, which is nice in case you blow a fuse. That's in the top with the fuse puller. And the actual panel itself, now you get two 30 amps, four 20 amps, three 10 amps, and three 5 amp connections. You can see one through 12 right here. These are, this is where you're gonna put in your different um, connections for the unit, your actual lights and whatever accessories you wanna run. Now this up here is gonna be where you plug in the switch panel, and this is your positive and negative that goes to the battery of your vehicle. This is for the antenna on the remote. But we'll go over wiring uh, next, but however, that is the switch panel assembly. Now, I'm sure some of you have probably seen the remote. I think this is a really cool feature that they've added, especially for a moment, what I'm going to be using this panel for. And I'll show you that here in a minute, what I'm installing this on. However, as you can see, this panel here, it feels great in the hand. It's a metal construction, nice haptic feedback with the buttons like they have a great feel to them now obviously you would put your stickers on what your lighting unit is on the panel itself but this one one two two three three you can see that this remote is going to be controlling whatever's on this panel i think within about 150 feet is the range so next this is the wiring for your battery uh, that's pretty self-explanatory the wiring for the panel this is the circuit switch that you're going to put on that basically controls the amount of amper it's the on and off for your actual circuit so this is nice that they add this because you can turn this off with the with the switch the whole unit that is now this is a oh this is a dust cover for the actual panel say you're at jeep beach and you don't want sand all in your panel you just put this cover over it and it'll protect the grime and grit that might get into your panel now this is, oh, this is the actual mount for the toggle panel, and this is your flush mount. Now this one's going to swivel and just wherever you want to mount it. Uh, this one would be more functionality of like where you want to mount it, but this one is just a flat bar. And a little bit more wiring here for your ignition. There's your antenna for the radio to be able to use the remote couple little zip ties there in the bottom and there's a sticker saying that the mounting bracket for the switch panel is in the bottom which it is you have two different mounting brackets depending on how you want to use this unit and they're in the bottom of the box so make sure if you're trying to find it that you look in the bottom of the box and it does have a sticker right here showing you that it's in the bottom so that's what's in the box uh, nothing too exciting as far as the unboxing goes but let's go ahead and put the battery on the table and wire this thing up and see what all it has and what all functions it can do. Now that I have the actual unit, the hub, the circuit board wired up, I'm gonna show you what I did. This is the hot, there's just one cable that runs all the way to the battery. 
This is your positive. There's two separate cables because of that switch that I mentioned previously. Put it, it goes into the switch and then goes out into the battery. Now the next thing is your ignition. That's this wire right here. It goes from here all the way. Now I put it to the battery, which this is a constant hot, but on your vehicle, there's two different types of fuses depending on how new your car is. There's a micro fuse and a standard size fuse. Now this is just an ignition tap. So find the fuse for your ignition and you're gonna to wanna to tap into it. And so you have a hot. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna turn this on anytime your key is in the on position. Otherwise, if you have it hooked up like this where it's just straight to the battery, this panel is never gonna turn off and that's gonna drain the uh, battery over time if your panel is always on. So make sure that you switch a uh, accessory switch into it for the ignition so that your fuse panel goes off. Now, next, you can see that I've got the radio wire or your antenna wire for the radio that goes for the remote right there. So I got that wired up. And so one more time here, the antenna wire, this is for the panel. It just runs over to here and there's a quick connect right here on the panel. So I got that wired up. This is your ignition. This is your positive. This is your negative, And that's the switch. Now, when you wanna add a accessory to it, I've just, now these little LED lights, uh, they're gonna be going on what I'm putting this on, which is that tent trailer over there. So this is gonna be like a floodlight for me, and this is as well. So I've got these, they don't need a 30 amp switch or a 30 amp relay, but I put them on a 30 amp relay just for the sake of this video of being one and two on my toggle panel. But you wanna look and see what your actual device is rated for as far as amperage, how much it's gonna be putting out. Now, if I wanted both of these to turn on and I only wanted them on one, then what I would do is just put both of these, the positive and negative, in and double it up on this relay right here, on this 30 amp, and it easily could handle that. But for the sake of this video to show you the very various features of this toggle panel, I decided to put it as one and two and not put them all on one. Now, the next thing I wanna show you guys is just, you know, oh, let's fire it on. There's one, there's two, two's back off, one's back off. I have the remote, one, two. All right, so a few of the specifications before I go into the features and how to use this panel is the voltage input is 12 to 24 volts, uh, depending on if you have, you know, a normal car is usually 12 volts. A military vehicle is 24 volts, so you can use these on 24 volt military vehicles like Hummers and old Jeeps and all that. The max current is 100 amps. The rated voltage is 12 volt, 20 amp. Max power, 1200 watt at 12 volt, 2400 watt at 24 volt and waterproof rating at IP65. So there's a couple of the specifications that this unit can withstand. Now let's talk about some of the features of this aux beam switch panel. Okay, so a couple of the functions of this panel here is, you see how there's no backlight right now? That's because if you hit the mode button, then you can turn your backlight on, hit the mode button again, turn the backlight off. Now say you want to use the functionality of momentary press, where you hold this button down and it turns your lights on because this unit has a toggle function which is what it's set up from the factory toggle means that turn it on double click mode you see how all these are lighting up red that means they're all on the toggle function so you hit it the light comes on hit it the light comes on now turn that back off say you want to do the momentary function which is blue double click this switch it to blue see both of these up here are now blue hit mode again, what it's gonna do is if your hand is on it, it's gonna be on. As soon as you take your hand off, turns off, on, off. This would be great for like a horn. See two, I'm holding it right now, take it off, now it's off. So I could see this being used for a horn or say like a spotlight feature that you only wanna use uh, very quickly, but a horn is primarily where you would use the momentary function. Now. One thing that would be cool to use in construction especially is the pulse function. Now, double click mode again, and I've clicked both of those. Now they're green. That means they're in the pulse mode. Hit your mode button again to save it, and you can see that both of these are now pulsing. They're flashing. Hit it again. I've turned one off, two still on. Turned two off. Now they're both off. Hit them again. Both of them are pulsing. So you can see that this, is, this would be very 
useful in the construction industry or if you're at a Jeep show and uh, you're trying to flex all your lights. So that's uh, some of the features, but there's a lot more. So let's dive into more of the features that's in this panel. So the next thing we can do with this switch panel is change the actual backlight display because this is a red, green, blue functionality of this aux beam panel. So say you want to change this to red. What you would do is press mode button and any of the buttons on these panel at the same on this panel at the same time. So let's do five and mode. And you're going to see this right here is lit up red. That means that it's in the setting state. One and four are what's going to control your color wheel in the clockwise direction. So let's reverse it back to red. So let's hold down one and you can see that now we're on like a yellow and purple, bluish look. Now we're in like a blue, a aqua. And just keep holding it down to this desired color that you want. Now we're back to a yellow, purple. All right, let's go four. Maybe four would go to more of the red. Oh, there was orange, green, dark blue. So there's red. Now that took me a little longer than I thought it probably would, but this is also my first time doing it. Now there is an app control that'll do all this as well that I'm about to talk about. So if you don't want to use the mode function on the actual panel to change all this, you can connect it via Bluetooth as well. Next, I want to show you one of my favorite features of this panel, which is the Bluetooth app control. Now, in your instruction manual, you'll have a QR code. It's on page 11. One for Android, one for iOS. Mine's iOS, so I'm going to scan the QR code, click the app store. It's going to come up with an app called Switch Panel. I've already downloaded it, but you'll need to download. Now, I've already downloaded this because I have other Oxbeam panels. Now, um, you can see up here, whenever I go to the Bluetooth settings, that my controller 6, 8, and 12 are all here for my other panels. But I'm gonna turn Bluetooth on. It automatically connected to controller 12 with the serial number, which is on the back of the unit. Now go back. You can see that it is connected. You have your brightness right here that you can control the panel back and forth. You also have your color wheel. This is a lot easier than hitting the mode button. So I'm gonna set it to blue now. So now I've got blue as my primary setting for the RGB. Now let's go to icons. You can actually choose custom icons in your app to put on the different buttons here, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I just wanna show you basically the mode feature. The mode is the same thing what we went over before. You can go in here and tell it what you want it to be. Um, I wanna put toggle on one here, so uh, which that's what it is right now, but let's say we want momentary. I've chose two to be momentary, which is the button for like the horn setting. So I hope you guys can see this. If not, uh, I, I wish it could be better, but this is pretty much the gist of how to use the app. But the app is so user friendly that I don't think you'll have much issue using this app. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the group function. Say I want to go up here and edit my group um, and I want to put one and two together. Now that one and two is together, I'm gonna save that, enter the icon name. I'm just gonna call it uh, group one. For, I'm just gonna call it G1. Now hit save. Now, if you'll notice, anytime that, I, well, I've got this one set to momentary, and or this one to toggle, this one to pulse. So let's go back and fix that. Let's go back to the mode function and change that to a toggle. You see how easy that was? Now go back to group and see when I press that, both of these come on. Now you can also see on the panel that both of these are lit up. So that's gonna work out great on my Jeep trailer because I can control these individually, but I also can group them together to turn them all on at the same time if, I, if it need be. So that is an install and overview of the AC1200 12 gang switch panel by Oxbeam. Now, like I've mentioned previously, I have other Oxbeam products, so I know their quality. As far as price goes, they're not the cheapest, but they're not the highest. They're uh, more like middle of the road, but I feel like for the quality that you're getting, the price 
is well worth the money that you're going to pay. Now, full disclosure, Oxbeam did send me this to do this review for you guys, but I do want to mention that I myself have bought Oxbeam products out of my own pocket. Just because they sent this to me doesn't mean that I'm, you know, trying to fluff up this review. That is not the case. I was going to buy this myself, but I was just uh, fortunate enough to have this sent to me to be able to put on the trailer and I uh, really appreciate Oxbeam for doing that. Now, if you would like a discount code of 15%, you can type in civilian Jeeps. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen here and that will save you 15% on this Oxbeam AC1200. Now, overall, I think this is a great product. Tons of functionality, tons of modes. For the price you're paying for this, I really feel like it's something that you need to check out and I'm gonna be installing it on my Jeep trailer and that's gonna be at a later video. I didn't wanna show you guys the Jeep trailer because I've not introduced it to the channel yet. Um, that's, uh, I'm building it on the side and I don't wanna go off on a side tangent here, but I'm just not ready to show you guys the trailer yet, but I wanted to show you this awesome panel and the functionality of it. Now, if you have any questions, leave a comment below or send me a direct message. And you know, when it comes to Jeeps, keep it classic.